So in case you're unfamiliar, a couple years ago, I did a video, actually a two-part video, where I upgraded Ubuntu 6.06 .06 all the way to 20.04, and you can go check that out up here. But shortly after it was published, a commenter actually jokingly suggested trying to do this with Debian, which in case you're familiar with that, Debian first released in 1993. So it's one of the oldest Linux distributions in existence. For reference, the first version of Ubuntu didn't come out until 2004. So I thought, you know what, I feel like I'd be up for the challenge of trying this upgrade and working with ancient Linux distributions. So let's give that a try and see if we can take Debian 1.3 and upgrade it all the way to Debian 11, which is the latest version at the time of shooting this video. All right, so like Ubuntu, Debian actually keeps an archive of their old releases on cdimage.debian.org slash cdimage slash archive. So actually right here is where we hit our first roadblock because the official images only go back to Debian 3.0, which was released in 2002. However, under older contrib, they do have a few user-provided images. However, this only goes back to 1.3, which came out in 1997. So this is as far back as we can go, hence the title of this video, going from 1.3 to 11, or at least trying to. So now I've actually already got the ISO file, and I've got a VM set up with it. Now I haven't booted it up yet, so we're gonna do it together. So this is the initial install of Debian 1.3. So we're gonna press enter to boot and our monitor displays color, so we're gonna select the color display. There we go, that's better. Next, we can exit out of this. Okay, let's try to follow the installation flow. We're gonna select English US, partition a hard disk. Okay, so now this is where we hit our first roadblock. Okay, so you can install legacy Linux distributions. However, we need to have a virtual hard disk as an IDE drive or else it won't work be just because it's that old. But anyway, let's try going through the installation again. Okay, now it sees our virtual drive. So we're gonna hit okay. Now it'll bring us into CF disk. We're gonna create a new partition. Primary is fine. Eh, I'll just fill up the whole space with it, and file system type is already Linux. Perfect, so we're gonna write this. Yes, we want to write our partition table, and we need to flag that as bootable. Let's write that, and now we can quit. Just because this is for experimentation purposes, we can do without a swap partition. Yes, we would like to do without a swap partition. And let's initialize a Linux partition. I almost forgot that this is back before the days when it automatically created a swap file. I mean, this is 1997, back when, you know, Linux was manual everything. Man, it's come a long way since then. But anyway, we're gonna initialize our new Linux partition. Eh, we don't need to scan for bad blocks, because that'll just add unnecessary time. Yes, we do want to initialize it as ext2. Okay, for some reason our file system was not created. All right, looks like our format worked this time. What I did is deleted the partition and then recreated it. But anyway, I'm gonna mount the root file system. And yes, let's install the operating system and kernel modules. Please select the medium that you will use to install the system. I'm gonna use the CD-ROM drive, CD-ROM interface. I think that would be SCSI. Okay, I figured it out. So under ins select installation medium, I have to select the CD-ROM drive and dev HDC, which is the first drive on the secondary controller. And I'm gonna get this from the default stable archive. And let's just configure it driver modules. Let's see what happens if I just skip this. Next, configure the network. Uh, this host name is fine. Is your system connected to a network? Yes, it is. Yeah, we can leave the domain name blank. Or not. I'll just call it Drew Howden Tech. Yeah, fine. Okay, hold up while I configure that. All right, so this is how I've set up my network configuration, and this is gonna be off of ETH0. And install the base system, and again, it's from the CD-ROM drive, the 
default stable archive. All right, configure the base system. I am in America slash New York. Yes, the hardware clock is set to GMT. Yes, let's make Linux boot directly from hard disk. Yes, we'll install the master boot record and boot the system on dev hda1. And we can reboot the system. And let's see if this boots. Okay, so it looks like I'm a failure in configuring the network. But anyway, let's set a password for a root. We'll select my username for the account and set a password for that. My full name is Drew Howden. I can leave everything else blank. And yes, install shadow passwords. Let's press enter to continue. Let's install using FTP. So that would be ftp.debian.org. Yeah. Anonymous. In this case, it would be Bo. That's the code name of the release. And from what I can see from the Debian CD image archive, older versions will actually ironically use the repo for the latest stable version of Debian by default, which, at least in theory, would upgrade us to the latest version of Debian. So let's try that. Eh, the defaults are fine. Okay. So, we can't communicate with the Debian Archive site because we can't get this on the internet. And this is where we hit a major roadblock because I actually can't figure out how to connect this to the internet. So let's quit out of this and power off the system. Oh my god, it didn't even have power off. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna do it this way then. Okay, so there comes a point where one must acknowledge their limitations. Can I work with ancient Linux distributions? Well, technically, yes. But do I really know what I'm doing? No. And that's simply because I only hopped on the Linux bandwagon a few years ago. So I'm obviously gonna be a lot more comfortable in more modern Linux distributions. Like, I'm sure if I were to get the existence of someone who's been using Linux for a long time, I'm talking like since the 90s, I feel like I might be able to do it. But the problem is, with the resources I have, obtaining that kind of assistance is gonna be a challenge for me. So it looks like I am gonna have to cheat a little bit on this challenge. But it just goes to show how far Linux has come since its early days, especially in terms of ease of use, and also how far technology has come in general. So I'm gonna be skipping ahead to Debian 3.1, which came out in 2005, and I know this is cheating because I'm skipping from 1997 all the way to 2005, so basically now I'm in early Ubuntu era, but I think this is the only way I'm going to even hope to have success here. So let's start the VM and get to installing this. I'm going to press enter to boot, select English as my language. I am in Canada. I'm going to use the American English key map. And I notice how this time it automatically configured my network, so hopefully that means I am online with this VM. The host name Debian works fine. I'll leave the domain name blank. Erase the entire virtual drive now that it's attached to this VM. And all files in one partition works fine. That's the setup I generally use. Yep, our partitioning looks good, so I'm gonna write the changes to the disk. Yes, write the changes to the disk. And yes, we'll install the grub bootloader to the master boot record. And reboot the system. Alright, so now let's configure the system. Yep, the hardware clock is set to GMT, and I am in Eastern Time. Let's go set a root password, and we'll create our non-administrative user account. Okay, and now I'm gonna pick the archive access method, and I am told by the Debian CD image archive website that the old releases of Debian will use the current repo, which will actually end up installing the system as the latest version of Debian, which is not what we want at this point in the process. And also the repos for this version of Debian aren't in the main repos. All right, and the repo for Debian 3.1 is, oh, first I gotta uncomment that, but anyway, it's http colon slash slash archive dot debian dot org slash debian sarge main. That's the main repo. I could add contrib and non-free, but for the purposes of this video, I don't need those, so I'm not going to bother. And I'm going to save the changes, and it's saying failed to access security updates. I'm sure that would be fine. And I'll install a desktop environment, and I think that's all I need. 
All right, and I'm gonna set the mail configuration to local delivery only. And I'm just gonna hit enter here. Desired X server driver. I think VESA would be okay. Let's attempt auto detection. Yes, our monitor is an LCD device. Okay, I'm just gonna hit enter through all of these. All right, so now it should bring us to the login prompt. Okay, and we actually get a graphical user interface. Right now our mouse doesn't seem to be working, but I'm just gonna log in here. Okay, our mouse still does nothing. Okay, it looks like I just had to disable mouse integration in my VM settings. Let's see if I can up my screen resolution. No, I cannot. So unfortunately, you're gonna be watching through this little display. So I'm hoping that won't matter too much to you. But anyway, let's get into the upgrade, which we're gonna be doing exclusively through the terminal. So first of all, I'm gonna switch to our root user because we need root privileges for this. And I'm just gonna nano etc slash apt slash sources dot list. And now I'm gonna try doing a direct upgrade by doing deb.debian.org slash debian stable main. And why not uncomment this and then save the file. Yes, and then I'm gonna do apt-get update just to make sure that that applied. Okay, I gotta actually comment this out. So it looks like we're gonna have to go by each individual version of Debian. So now I'm back in my sources.list file and I'm gonna change this back to archive.debian.org slash Debian and then I'm gonna change this to etch which is the code name of 4.0 the next version up control X Y enter see if that'll update now there we go okay so let's do an apt dash get dist dash upgrade hit enter yes let's do the upgrade all right now I'm just gonna hit enter through this Enter, 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 enter. All right, let's select our resolutions. I think this is fine. All right, so in theory, we have an upgraded system. So let's reboot it and see what happens. Okay, it looks like that upgrade succeeded, so let's log in. And I notice how my Display is scaling up larger, not quite to the size of my display, but this should allow you to see more fully the process. But anyway, I'm going to switch back to the root user in a terminal, and I'm going to edit my sources.list again. This time I'm going to Debian 5.0 Lenny. Control X, Y, enter to save. And do our apt get update again. Okay, so we did get a GPG warning, but let's try our dist upgrade anyway. I'm going to hit Y to do it. Yes, install these packages without verification. I mean, this is a virtual machine, so what's the worst that could happen? And again, I'm going to enter through all these prompts. Oh, failed upgrade. Okay, I'm going to try deleting that file and then do the dist upgrade again. Okay, I'm going to do dash F. Yeah, yes, install without verification. Okay. I'm gonna try this again. This time I'm not gonna upgrade glibc now. Nope, still giving the same error. And by the way, pretty much when you get this error, y you got some kind of a problem with your package manager. Like, essentially, you have a broken system. But there is one last thing I'm gonna try before I completely throw up my hands and give up. All right, so I have a Debian 5.0 ISO and I'm gonna do what's called a partial reinstall or a refresh install from this. And by the way, this is not the same as a clean install, but I'm gonna select my language, country, key map, host name, domain name, time zone. Okay, so now here is where we're gonna deviate from a normal clean install. So I'm gonna select manual. We've got our primary and logical partition. Double click on that. I'm gonna use this as the XT3 journaling file system. No, do not format the partition, keep existing data. I'm gonna set the mount point to slash or the root file system. Mount options default, bootable flag on, and I am done setting up the partition.
Okay, and finish partitioning and write changes to the disks. Okay, our primary is not being formatted, so yes, write these changes. The target file system contains files from a past installation. This, these files could cause problems with the, the installation process, and if you proceed, some of the existing files may be overwritten. Proceed with the installation.include target? Yes, let's do that. Let's try that at least. Okay, so now we got a dead bootstrap warning. Okay, we got a base system installation error. So even a refresh install won't work, at least not for Debian 5.0. I'm gonna abort the installation. All right, so with a Debian 11 ISO, I'm gonna try the partial reinstall once more. And yes, let's proceed with installation to the unclean target. And no, that did not work. So while in theory, there is no reason why you couldn't take an old version of Debian and upgrade it all the way to the latest, as you can see, in practice, it isn't that simple. And it just might not work just because of changes that happen over time that end up creating dependency hell. And I've only been on Linux for three years, almost four at this point, but still, my knowledge of ancient Linux distributions is still limited. Now, I still want to continue this experiment. So in my next video, I'm going to take Debian 5.0, you know, the version that was causing us issues when upgrading to it, and see if I can upgrade that all the way to Debian 11. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, if you liked this video and you found it was interesting, be sure to like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff, and see you next time.